Hey everyone, welcome to Vlogmas Day 23. I cannot believe we're on day 23. Today we are doing an eyeshadow palette declutter. So I did a single eyeshadow declutter earlier in this year. Um, so I will link that up in the eye if you are in the mood for a good decluttering video and you haven't seen that one already. I did a lip gloss declutter, not yesterday but the day before. And I said like in the run up to Christmas I like to try and cycle through things, try and get rid of a couple of things. If you don't want any chat at all by the way and you just want to get straight to the decluttering of the eyeshadows I will timestamp that down below. But I am going to have a quick chat for the regular people who want to hear the chat. So I like to try and declutter generally in the run up to Christmas but as those of you who are you know not new around these parts will know as pair behind me where we have like the headboard and half a painted wall and it's all it is what it is. I have been redecorating this room or talking about redecorating this room for about two years and then obviously we had a pandemic and you couldn't have workmen in and whatever. I don't know if I really told you or not but basically in like September everything got emptied out because it was all planned in, it was all starting and uh, then basically the first person, the person who was meant to come in and move the light switches didn't turn up so everything else then had to get rescheduled because there was no point in painting walls or putting up paper if we were going to then rip it apart to move light switches, plug points rather. So I've been living out of boxes for a very long time. I'm a bit at my wit's end with it, I'm not going to lie, but finally I have wardrobes in. So, so I have four doors worth of wardrobes here. This one is going to be, there's going to be another couple of uh, drawers in here. Basically, so I mapped these all out and I planned everything. But you know how you make plans and then reality kicks in? So I had such plans and now I'm a bit like, I've got more stuff than I planned for. Which seems mad given this has been my year of one so I've been on a really strict low buy and I know I need to catch you up with like the things I have bought and whatever with that but I have been on a very strict low buy this year and I've stuck to it and I don't feel I brought a lot in. I have been, I don't, I do feel like especially the past number of months that this living out of boxes has been going on. I do think that slowed down the amount of stuff that I've used up towards the end of the year. I still was consistently using stuff up, it was just that things kept getting put away that I didn't want put away and then I would take them back out and then they would get put away again and it was, really was going to commit murder at some point. So yeah, I do think my, my moving out of stuff got a bit slowed down because of the redecoration and the way that it got kind of pulled out to be a far longer process than it really ever should have been and it's obviously as you can see it's still ongoing. What, where was I going with this? Yes, so I like to generally do a pre-Christmas declutter anyway. My laptop is doing today's video by the way if you can hear that in the background but because i would made a plan and I'm looking at it and I'm like I don't know if we can execute the plan, there's just that sort of extra sort of motivation to be like right let's try and clear out and like obviously the majority of the wardrobe it's it's clothing and shoes and bags that are going to need cleared out to make that workable but I've only got plans for one well I've only got one other piece of furniture planned for this room at the moment that I have which is a bureau which is going to be my sort of desk and it's got a couple of drawers in it but it's not got a lot of storage in it so my plan for my makeup is, so these are, this is the Ikea. What I've done is I've made up the inside of the wardrobe myself and then just paid to get the fancy doors and the joiner to install the doors around here um, because that was just much cheaper than getting a fully custom built in wardrobe. And my thought process is as well, like I can take this when I move out. I probably could, to be fair, take the doors and then if they could match the wood get like the built-in bit done again but well we'll see we'll see when we ever get to move out and buy a house hopefully one day but yes the plan depending on how certain other things work out is that so there are more drawers to go in here and I'm hoping to fit the majority of my makeup into one of those drawers and I'm also going to have a shelf but that will be all of my makeup except eyeshadow palettes because I'm not going to delude myself that my eyeshadow palettes 
plus everything else are going to fit into one of these drawers. So I will show you my eyeshadow palettes to start with. I am down in the living room now. So as I said, I've started moving my clothing back in. So I have emptied out these three suitcases. I've still got clothing in this suitcase. I've got another suitcase upstairs that I'm halfway through emptying. And all of this is clothing and some of that. So that is mainly going in the wardrobe. But then I've got all of this, which is just like stuff and then stuff here and all of this I don't think you can even really see but that goes like all the way down to that wall there is all just stuff that needs to be fitted in that like so the wardrobe is where the clothing is going to go um, and where some of the makeup is going to go and like obviously I'm going to have to find spots for hair stuff skincare and I've got the bureau which will take like my stationary bits and pieces but my only other piece of furniture that I'm really planning is like a sort of bedside table or something to function as a bedside table. I'm actually like, I'm not set, I've not bought anything yet, but I am thinking about a bar cart. I've seen one in Oliver Bonus that I really like, but whatever I end up going for, even if I don't go for that one, I want something really minimal that's just going to take like my reading light, my book, like maybe my nighttime skincare. So I don't have plans to bring much more storage into the room than the wardrobes provide. I've got under bed storage but it's not very accessible. But yeah, so that's basically where we are is we need to have less stuff. And because I know the eyeshadow palettes aren't going to go into the drawer, so some of them, in fact, two boxes are together so that's alright. So most of them are in the wicker crate at the bottom and then more are in here. And what I would like to do is be able to get them all into just the crate. So that's quite a nice Fortnum and Mason like wicker crate. And if that has to sit out in the meantime, like it looks all right sitting out. Ideally, I want to declutter so that they can all fit in there. That is the plan. It's one of those ones I feel like if I look at how much stuff there is, I feel like on camera it does not look as bad as it actually is in terms of amount of stuff versus amount of space to get stuff into, which is not big, which is this small. I would just get a bit overwhelmed, so we're going to kind of just do it in sections and, you know, taking a take care of the pennies and the pounds will take care of themselves kind of approach to it is like, let's just not try and get rid of like 50% of everything, let's just take it section by section. And today's section is eyeshadow palettes. So. That's kind of one side of it is I'm going to move stuff back into my room and I quite like to try and declutter stuff as categories find their space within my new space. So I think that's quite a nice opportunity to declutter. But the other side of it is that when I was in Manchester, I got a very nice eyeshadow palette. So yes, I did it. I got the Gucci eyeshadow palette because it's the most beautiful thing in the whole world. But now that I've spent all this money on this beautiful package. I really want to use said beautiful package. And yeah, I feel like it's it's the thing about the space, but it's also, I'm, I feel like I'm in quite a good headspace at the moment to sit, have that Gucci palette, which I've not even used yet, so this is not based on formula. It's based on feeling. It's based on like, I am so excited to use that. I'm so excited to own it. And that's how I want to feel about everything that I keep. So I feel like we're in quite a good place today to go through the palettes, have that one as being like, this is what we're measuring it by. It has to be, although I don't have an opinion on the quality of that one yet, I'm fairly sure it's going to be good, let's be real. I know how I feel about it and that's how I want to feel about every piece of makeup in my collection. It's it's the feeling and then it's also like, if I don't feel that that about it, it should go to make sure that I am using the things that I do feel like that about. Does that make sense? I think that's enough chat and putting into context. Let's get into it. It is quite a grey day in Scotland. I have turned the ring light on, so hopefully that will help. But either way, we have one, we have two, and we have a Gucci palette to measure all the other palettes by that I'm holding upside down. Not that you can really tell, but here you go. It feels disrespectful to hold Gucci upside down, so we'll write that. So yeah, let's um, let's get on into what will hopefully be a very good declutter. 
fingers crossed. Okay, so I feel like 10 seconds ago I was like, I'm so ready for this now. I'm like, oh no, I'm not, I'm not. Let's not do this today. But we're going to do this today. Okay, this is the Kat Von D Serpentina palette. Oh, see, this shade is lovely, Medusa. I really shouldn't swatch actually, this is a terrible route to go down. Oh, that's beautiful. And then obviously I love the Scarab shade. Oh, it's so soft and pigmented. See, I'm not even as into that one. I just, I really like these two shades and I think that's why I'm holding on to the whole palette. But I could depot those two shades and get rid of the palette in general. So I might do that. I think what we would do is do a pile of palettes that I only want certain shades from. And then we could maybe see about doing some depotting at the end. Right, I'm definitely keeping this. This is my Mel Impulsive palette. I bought it when I went to Florida at the end of 2019, which was basically my last holiday before COVID hit. So it is actually two years old at this point, but it still feels like one of the absolute newest things in my collection, thanks to doing my no buy in 2020 and my low buy this year. I do I absolutely love this palette, so definitely keeping that. Urban Decay Alice in Wonderland. This is one that I definitely bought because of the theming and I like it, but I never really think to, I think the packaging is just so bulky, despite the fact that the packaging is basically what I bought it for. Yeah, do you know, I'm just, I'm ready to say goodbye to this one. So this one is going to go. This one does not make me feel like the Gucci palette does. Oh, this isn't actually a palette. These are all single shadows, one of which has just fallen out on me. Oh, like fully fallen out of the pan. Do you know what? I bought these individually. They're from Cryolan. But yeah, I never reach for these, so I'm just gonna say goodbye to this, even though technically this is four single shadows, but it lives in with my palette, so we will talk about it in this video. It's sending the whole thing very dark. Right, we're saying goodbye to the Cryolan collection of four single shadows. I'm now covered in pink shadow. Right, next up, Milani Earthly Elements. I bought this in New York in 2016. And you know what, I love the time I had with this, but I think it's time has come. I am going to get rid of that one too. Lorac Pro and Lorac Pro 2. I bought these in, well, I didn't buy them. I ordered them online and got them delivered to my hotel when I went to Florida in 2015. You couldn't get Lorac in the UK at that point. Lorac's still quite hard to get hold of, to be fair. Um, like, you can't just walk into a shop and buy it. You need to buy it online and whatever. Um, and yeah, like, I mean, I've had them since 2015 and they look basically untouched. So I think we'll just get rid of these. What's next? NARS, oh. So this is the NARS Dual Intensity. I don't even think they look like, if you guys can see, it doesn't actually look like there's pans under those shades. Like, I don't know if I could depot that and I love this shade here. I couldn't tell you the last time I used any of the others, but I do love that Himalaya shade. It's super, super pretty. Oh, look at that, it's so beautiful. I do, de I want to keep this shade, but I'm not, I don't even see a pan to like feel confident. Like it looks like they're literally just pressed straight into the plastic. I presume they're not, like that would be unusual, but I cannot see a pan but I definitely don't want to declutter this shade. Put this in with the next to the Kat Von D one uh, for potentially pulling a shade out of. Urban Decay Naked Basics 2. This is still in the box and do you know what? I need to stop doing that. Like, do you know when you get new makeup? Why can I not get you open? Not that this is new. And then I keep it in the box and then that's just an extra like thing in the way of me using it. Cause if I go to take it out, I have to get it out of the box. So. I'm going to keep this because I love the shade and I love a matte eye look. So I'm going to keep that, but I'm binning this box so that it doesn't get in the way of me using this. I'm going to keep my Marc Jacobs palettes. Am I? I'm always super attracted to blue as a shade. I don't really know why because I don't actually like it on me very much, but I'm always very attracted to it. 
in a palette but then this is one of these ones like if I swatch this like that's not actually blue it's just that the blue in the palette makes it look like it's a blue palette let me swatch this No, do you know what? I'm going to get rid of this one because I love this shade, but I'm doing... Do I want to try and keep that shade? I might try and keep... Right. We're going to put this one in the pile of we might try and depot this shade, but I feel like the rest of the palette could probably go. I am definitely keeping this Marc Jacobs palette though, so this is the scandalous one, which is like sort of warm, coppery through to reds, um, but I just... I don't really ever use this shade, but I do love like this shade to this shade, so I feel like that's a majority that makes it worth keeping and I have really liked everything I've tried from Marc Jacobs Beauty. I really feel it's an underrated brand. Now we don't really know what's happening with them um, but I'm definitely, I'm going to keep this palette for definite. Okay next up, you can actually see it like these are like they're dusty from being in here. So this is Urban Decay Vice. I'm not sure which number it is, it just says Vice. Do you know what? I used to love these big colourful palettes but I feel like I don't really do those big colourful looks anymore and because I've got so much I couldn't have told you what was in this palette before I opened it and I feel like I want to become so familiar with my palettes that if I was like oh, I'm doing a green eye look I know I want Grasshopper from Urban K Vice whatever and that's not where I am with this palette so I'm not using it like that in moment. And I'm not going to become like that with any palettes unless I make space to be using them regularly to become like that. So if I'm not using this like that at the moment, I'm not missing out on anything by just passing this along. I'm going to get rid of this one, which this feels like it's such a nice package. It's such a big palette. Like it's got that cool design on the front. It feels like one that I want to hang on to, but... I couldn't tell you the last time I used it and if I'm not using it I can clearly live without it so I'm gonna pass that one on. Oh, right this I'm going to keep. I got this in Florida in 2019 as well and I feel like this offers something quite individual to my collection because it's got these like real glitter shades and the other ones are all quite neutral so I feel like if I thought I'm going to go for a full glitter look this is what I would pull out and then I would use the other shades around those glitters so I'm going to keep that for that, even though I don't love this packaging. I, yeah, it's a Tarte, um, Tarte Winter Wonder Glam, I think it was called. Um, so yeah, I'm going to keep it even though I don't love the packaging in the slightest. Packaging does not make me feel Gucci. Okay, so Urban Decay Vice Reloaded, number 20. Again, it's another pleasing package, this Vice palette. But you know what? It's exactly the same as the other, everything I said about the other Vice palette counts for this one. So let's get rid of this. Okay, I've been, I've been low-key, I don't know if you can tell, I've been low-key avoiding picking up these ones. So this is the Christmas in New York set from Too Faced. I've got one, two, three sets from that collection. And this is one of these situations where I cannot judge this on the makeup alone because I love Christmas in New York. It is my favourite time to visit the city. It's my favourite city, like, ever. I just, I love it, but I love it so much at Christmas time. It is such a specific feeling and such a specific experience. It's so different to anywhere else. And I know that sounds mad unless you know what I'm talking about, but it, it really is a very, very special it's a special city to me anyway, but it's, it's my favourite time of year and my special time of year in my favourite city. And it's just, yeah, the whole thing kind of, this, it, it shouldn't, but it means that everything in this collection goes beyond the makeup. And I'm not necessarily just thinking about the makeup when I think about decluttering this. I love this palette. I use this one quite a lot, the um, Eggnog Latte palette, because it's got the green in it but it's mainly neutral. I've taken this like if I've been going on holiday or whatever. Um, so I definitely, I use that one. I don't use this one, the pinky peppermint mocha one. I don't know if my friend Lauren would like that actually. Although she's getting enough makeup, she probably doesn't need me being like, here, have this palette. I might get rid of this palette. And then the gingerbread one, I feel like I own these colors elsewhere. 
so I feel like I want to keep this palette as a palette and then I want to keep like this bit of packaging because I love the packaging which is probably a bit silly but hopefully I could maybe store some other things in there so yeah I'm going to keep the eggnog latte palette from the Grand Hotel Cafe set and I'm going to get rid of gingerbread cookie and peppermint mocha from the set then oh, okay oh causing an avalanche there so again, Christmas in New York, you can see I had this sitting on, um, like with the windowsill facing into it because this bit's bleached and this bit isn't. So uh, when you open this up, it's got like the Rockefeller ice rink and I just, uh, again though, it's, it's so about that piece of packaging that I love. It's not necessarily, so this is Mary Macaroon's palette. And I couldn't tell you the last time I used it, if I'm being totally honest. But I do, I love the illustration, it's the Rockefeller. It is so the theming with this. But I think I need to admit that I don't use this. Like, I feel like the thing with this is because it's kind of like a box, I could get something else in it. Whereas this, like, even if I get rid of the palette, like, what am I going to do with that as much as it's a beautiful scene? I do love it, it is so beautiful. What would you do? Can you guys think of a way to repurpose this? Could I, like, I could cut that off maybe and like... Am I going to do anything with it though? If I keep it, that's the thing. Like, it is beautiful, but am I going to do anything with the packaging if I get rid of the palette but keep the packaging? Which is what I'm thinking about doing. Like, I'm wondering if I could, like, get that taken off and then, like, put that in one of those 3D frames or something, but, like... I don't know, it's so cute and it's it's the Rockefeller and it's New York and it's Christmas. I want to keep the packaging. This is going to go into a miscellaneous packaging pile to be decided what I'm going to do with it. But I am going to get rid of the actual palette. And this one I think I'll keep. So this is the Christmas in New York. This is the chocolate shop. And I actually, I reach into this palette quite a lot. So. See, again, like, the packaging, the scene in this one is nice, but the scene in the Merry Macarons is more, um, or Merry Macarons, I suppose it is, is more Christmassy and more New York, whereas this is, like, a chocolate shop, and yes, it says Fifth Avenue, but it's not, it's not quite as specific to New York as the others, but it does have the New York skyline on it. And I do like this palette, um, I think this palette is absolutely slated when it came out but I reach for it quite a lot, I've travelled with it, it's it's basic and I'm not saying it's anything particularly special but I do, I do actually use it a lot so I'm going to keep that one. Okay, this one from Smashbox Cherry Smoke, I absolutely love this but I feel like I've had my time with it um, so I'm going to get rid of that one. This is one I'm going to get rid of as well, this was the MAC Brook Shields collaboration. It's a lovely palette but it's so so old, I don't even want to google when that collaboration actually took place and I remember like buying it and it being £60 and that was like before MAC did, you know how MAC have like the warm neutrals palette and stuff now, like this was before that was a thing, you could only get like a MAC, this amount of MAC eyeshadow by buying them individually and making up the palette and it was just I remember getting it and it was such good value because you could not get this kind of palette from MAC at that point which you can now. The colours are lovely but they're colours I own elsewhere so I'm going to get rid of this one because I'm not even a particular Brooke Shields fan it was just literally like getting a MAC palette for £60 was like unheard of at the time. I'm gonna get rid of this. So this is from Maybelline and it's called the Burgundy Bar. One of mine smashed as you can see and it just kind of made the rest of the palette a bit dusty and then I avoided using it for ages because it was such a mess and then I just gave up with the smash one and binned it but I feel like I just like the whole palette's a bit of a mess and I can't really be bothered cleaning it or anything so I'm just gonna get rid of that. This isn't actually a palette, so these are my three MAC singles that I've held on to. Woodwinked Amber Lights Nylon, and I am going to keep a hold of these. These are actually in my single eyeshadow inventory, but obviously it's a palette, so it gets stored in with my palettes. And my other single eyeshadows that are in a palette, this is my Z palette, so again, these are all on my inventory as single shadows. I am keeping them at the moment. 
feel like there's quite a lot here I want to keep now. This is, Lauren actually got me this. Well, she didn't get me it, she actually got a free one with her. She ordered one and was sent more than one, basically, is what happened. Um, so she gave me the spare one. It's so pretty. Definitely keeping that one. And the packaging is just so beautiful as well. Although again, I should get rid of the box because exactly as I said about the Urban Decay one, it's another hindrance in the way of using it. But the box is really, really pretty on this one. So I'm keeping it in the box as well, just now. Right, I'm definitely keeping my Urban Decay Game of Thrones Love this palette. I'm not even, not up for discussion. We're keeping that one. I'm keeping, I'm definitely keeping both of these. So this was the Saint and Sinner palette from KVD Beauty and this was the Fetish um, palette from KVD Beauty. And do you know the thing is, I wouldn't, as I said, I wouldn't think to reach into an Urban Decay Vice palette, but I love these palettes, despite the fact that kind of what I said about the Urban Decay Vice palette and it doesn't really have a colour story and whatever, also applies here but I feel like I know these palettes and I know what shades are in them and um, so yeah keeping those two this is the Sephora Minnie Mouse palette which I totally bought from the theming but you know actually the shadows are really good but it's a bit bulky it doesn't store particularly well yeah I think I'm going to pass this one on. The shadows are really good but I don't think to reach for them that's kind of the issue. I am going to keep my Always the Great and Powerful palette, so I've got the Theodora and the Glinda one um, and I actually I really really like both of these so I'm keeping them. Keeping this, this was from Peri I think I will bin the box of that one, I will be good and bin this box. So again it's it's just quite a sort of neutral sort of shimmery pretty palette but it's really really cute so definitely keeping that one. I want to keep both my, there's the other one, both of my Ciate Olivia Palermo palettes. So she has it online now, so this was back from before she had it online. That is really, no I'm going to keep both of them, yeah. I was going to like think about just keeping this one, but no I really like, and I really like this as well if I remember. I mean they're so soft these shadows, they're so so beautiful. Yeah. Oh, they're so pretty. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep both of them. I think I'm keeping both of these from MAC. Yeah, this one's got the... Will I? So these are both lovely and they're fun and they're easy to travel with. But, uh, do you know, I might just do the thing where I will keep the two like shades that I'm... In fact, no, do you know what? I'm ready to pass this one on. I'll pass that one on for definite. And that goldy shade is pretty, but I probably own it elsewhere, don't I? So do you know what? I'll pass pass that one on as well. So they were both from the MAC Fruit Fruitola, I think it was called, collection. Probably for all the wrong reasons, but I am not going to pass on my MAC Cinderella palette. I love that film so much. And I love this palette. And it's it's easy and it's neutral and it is old now and it's probably not performing its best but Cinderella is my like second favourite Disney princess and I always like her merch the best so definitely keeping that. More emotional probably than like what it should be but it is what it is. Urban Decay Ultimate Naked Basics. Let's just open Naked Basics 2 here. There's probably no need for me to keep both because I feel like what I use from this palette is are these top four here, which are very similar to, or do I want to keep this palette and not that one? I think I'm going to, no, I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to keep Naked Basics too and I'm going to pass along Naked Ultimate Basics. I really am being quite ruthless here. I hope we're all very impressed. I'm very impressed with myself if I may say so. Meet Matt Nude, again, as I said with the Urban Decay one, I really like a nude eye look. Um, so I do quite like having these matte palettes to dip into. Yeah, I'm gonna keep that for now. I am going to throw away this sleeve thing though and just keep the actual palette. Okay, Urban Decay Naked 3. Do you know what, I really liked this when it first came out, but I feel like I had my time with it. I'm ready to pass that one on, so I'm gonna get rid of Naked 3. NARS Loaded, oh, I like this one. Although again, 
I like these two shades is really what I'm seeing here. Yeah, I mean, like, I love those two. Oh, they're so shiny. I mean, I, like, I do use the others, but I use them around those two. What about you? You're, like, lovely as well. Nah, not as exciting. I might depot these two and get rid of the rest of that palette. So I'll put that in the things to be depotted pile. Okay, we're on to my Too Faced palette. So Sweet Peach, I really like. I think this kind of replaced Naked 3 actually. And then it's got just those hints of greens through it and it's just a bit easier for me to wear. So holding on to Sweet Peach. Chocolate Bonbons. Do you know what? I actually really like all these colours when I look at them, but I never reach for this palette. And I think it's something about this being heart shapes just makes me feel like it's like pretend makeup. I don't feel like, I know it sounds absolutely silly, but I don't feel like a woman when I use this. I feel plain dress up or something, but I love some, like, some of the shades are beautiful. Like, and I feel like if I was ever to do a pan that palette, I could probably do this palette because it's so, the shades are so pretty and so wearable. Do you know what? I'm going to keep this, but I need to use it. I need to get over my annoyance with the heart shapes because the shades are lovely. If these shades were not in heart shapes, I wouldn't even be considering decluttering this. And I do think the thing is, it's a whole experience using makeup. So like the shapes count for something, but yeah, I'm gonna keep it for now. I'm definitely keeping gingerbread extra spicy. I I know everybody like takes the mick out of these, but I really like the gingerbread and pumpkin palettes. I don't care. I'm definitely going to keep that one. I probably should take it out of the box, but it's a nice box. So I'm gonna break my own rules and keep that one in the box. Cargo, oh, do you know, I loved this so much when I first got it, but it's quite old now and I feel like I've had my time with it. I remember seeing Cargo in New York in 2016 and being really excited about it because it's not, it wasn't a very well known brand here and Debenhams only had like a sort of selection of products um, and I was so excited to see like more of the range which means that I had this from pre-2016 at least so I'm going to pass this one, well I'm probably, when I say pass it on like there's a girl that I speak to online who paints and she crushes up old eyeshadow pigments that aren't fit for using on the eye and like makes things with them so what I'll probably do is send her pictures of all these palettes and be like what ones do you want and then the rest will probably go in the bin because most of them are very very old. And then the last palette that's in this is my Morphe Jaclyn Hill Dark Magic palette and I feel like I don't reach into this and I don't love the packaging for some reason on this but I really like the shades so I'm going to keep a hold of that for now. Okay so we have an empty, empty number one. And out of that, so we've got one, two, no, that's a piece of packaging that we're in a miscellaneous pile of its own. You can't even see what I'm looking at, right? So we've got one random piece of packaging that I want to keep. Then we've got one, two, three, four palettes that have things that I, like individual shades that I want to take out of. Then we are keeping one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. This doesn't count as a pack palette on my thing, and neither does this. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. So we're keeping twenty-one. Let's see how many we've decluttered. Well, we're keeping 22 actually because I've got the Gucci one right next to me here. So that's that's definitely staying. Then we have decluttered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So 19 that we're getting rid of, that's, that's a pretty good start. I'm quite pleased with that. And I feel like that is the majority of them. But there is more in here, so let's get into this box. It's pitch black outside now. Ugh, at least the short, the shortest day of the year is done. It now gets lighter here on out. So I've just been doing some depotting. So those are the two from the NARS palette. 
Those are the two from the KVD palette and that's the one from the Marc Jacobs palette that I decided to save. Um, but I just went into this palette here. Like they're not in, they're like baked rather than in palettes if that makes sense. Um, or in pans rather. So I am going to keep this palette as it is rather than like trying to take that out and get it into my Z palette. So yeah, my single shadows will go up by five so far in the process and then I'm going to take those palettes. I'll need to do the calculations for them slightly separately rather than just decluttering them but they will come off my inventory. Let's get on to box number two. This isn't actually as bad as it looks I don't think because yeah so that's the Anna and Elsa boxes there and then that box under there is actually highlights so it's not it's not as many as it looks but let's get on into it. I don't think there's going to be a lot of declutters here if I'm honest but we shall see. Okay so these are all relatively new, like I got these two for my birthday, the Colourpop Limoncello and the KBD Planet Fanatic, uh, Colourpop Wild Child as well, so I'm going to definitely keep those three. I'm going to keep my Mandalorian palette, super super cute, got that for Christmas last year, so again it's a bit newer. This was Christmas last year too, the Guerlain, I'll show you the packaging in this, it's so beautiful. The shadows are beautiful too, but like... Oh, it's so gorgeous. Um, yeah, definitely keeping this one. This is like top tier. The packaging in this is like so beautiful that I feel like if I ever finish the contents, I would have to keep the packaging, like the outer packaging to use for something else. So definitely keeping that one. This is the Too Faced Pumpkin Spice. So this was, um, again, yeah, this was Christmas last year I got this for and I asked for it, I picked it, I wanted it, so I'm keeping that. Too Faced Christmas Cookie House Party I got in Florida in 2019, so keeping that one. My Anna and Elsa palettes, which are both in their collection boxes. I've got some Christmas cards there as well. I'm definitely keeping both of them. Okay, so as I said, this red box here is actually highlights that are in here, so they are not eyeshadows, so we will think about them separately, but I'm not hiding more eyeshadow from you under here. Um, okay, so going on to here, I've got Colourpop Just My Luck and Orange You Glad, which I'm going to keep both of them. Definitely keeping my Morphe Making Bank palette, so this was in my 2021 project pan. We never hit pan, sadly. I mean, there's still like days to go, but I don't think it's going to happen, but I love the palette, so I'm definitely keeping the palette. This is in... This year's project pan, it's the ABH Subculture palette. It's this shade here that I've got in the project. And I used this shade and this shade today. And I feel like I'm happy to let go of everything else except the one that's in my project pan. I'm going to put that into the depotting pile. Also in the depotting pile, I kind of said this in my last project pan check-in that this was in. So this is my ABH Modern Renaissance. It was in my 2021 project pan for this shade here which I've hit pan on obviously and the thing about this palette is that I like the shades I've hit pan on and I've obviously finished up Tempera um, but it, it's so old I feel like it's really had its time so I think I'm going to depot these two shades for Mir and Primavera because they are so so pretty um, and get rid of the rest of the palette so that's another depotting exercise. Urban Decay Naked Smoky. I think I'll keep this just because I don't have a lot of dark smoky shades. It's not something I sort of gravitate towards and I feel like if I ever did decide oh, I want to do a really dark smoky eye I would think of this palette so I'm going to keep hold of that one. Uh, what else have we got? Hourglass. That's, that shouldn't even, oh no this is face palettes. <laughs> I was judging myself there when I shouldn't have been. Hourglass face palette. Let's do you know what, as a bonus, let's just declutter that out of my face palettes, bit of my inventory. No, in fact, do you know what, I'll leave it because I'm just going to, I'm just going to confuse things if I do face palettes in here as well. So yeah, we'll come back and we'll do face palettes and highlights before the end of the year or very, very early next year. And that's a spoiler that that one I'm clearly ready to let go of. Um, so right, let's put the rest of this box out of the way because the rest of them are all 
we also have the face palettes. So these are a different category on my inventory. So I have palettes of six or more shades as my big palettes. Um, and then these are my smaller palettes, but I'm going to just go through them in this video. Definitely keeping, I think I'll be keeping most of these to be fair. I really like most of these. Uh, so this one is from a brand called Diego Dal Palma and it is super, super beautiful. I absolutely love those shades. Definitely keeping that. This is from Elanaska and this is exactly what I was saying about how attracted I am to blue shades, but I don't really like them on me. I'm gonna get rid of that one. NARS is this is old, yes it is. Absolutely beautiful, definitely keeping that one. Bourgeois, I, do you know, this looks like it should be nothing kind of special, but I actually really like it. Um, so I think I'll keep that. This from, I think this could go. So this is from YSL and yeah, I've like panned one shade all together. I've got one breaking up and then I've got two left and I'm not gonna pan the other two. So I think we will say goodbye to this one. Uh, this little Dior. I feel like this is really cute, but I also would never think to reach for it. So I'm just gonna pass that on. Essie Lauder Blue Smoke. I think we will, we will just agree that it's time to pass this one on too. So there we go. Um, next full do you know I wanted this so badly and they never released it in the UK and I had to get it abroad and I really really wanted it but I think I'd be holding on to it because I remember how much I wanted it and how much of an effort it was to like well it wasn't that much of an effort but how I had to get it in America and like how excited I was when I finally tracked it down and whatever but I very rarely use it so yeah I think we will pass that one on uh, this YSL duo do you know what, I'm gonna keep this, this is so old, but I do absolutely love the shades, so keeping that. This Clarins Christmas one, this is so old. Like I remember buying this whole collection and I really, really loved it, but I never reached for it. We can say goodbye to this one. I feel like we'll be keeping all of these. So I've got three Chanel quads here. So we've got Quads of Teals, super, super pretty. Definitely keeping Candour It Expect Levels. Absolutely gorgeous, like warm matte neutrals. And then this is Tissi Delto. See, this is the thing, I know these palettes much better than I know my big palettes because I kind of remember what they are and, you know, I tend to be like, oh, I'm going to do this look, I will grab this quad and it's a kind of ready-made quad and whatever, so. I do use these more than I use my big palettes specifically because of that um, and then these are all my Dior ones so I've got Capital of Light it's a really really nice sort of neutral one with just a pop of purple through it keeping that Golden Reflections yep keeping that one definitely Golden Shock yes Again, kind of purple mauves, kind of nude. The thing is, like, there's ugh, repeats of themes, particularly with Dior and Chanel, because they do stay within a sort of safety blanket, but they do it very, very well. Keeping that one too. And then lastly, this is my green one. Yes, it's called Emerald. And that is what that one. See, it kind of complements my ring. It's sort of geometric and green. That's my my taste obviously. So yeah, I'm keeping that okay. So so from the small palettes, we're keeping one, two, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we're keeping 12 small palettes and getting rid of one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so keeping 12, getting rid of six, that's a third actually. That's, um, that's more than I sort of thought we'd make a dent into with the small palettes. So that's exciting. So the palettes have been ravaged, um, but I thought I would just make sure to explain really clearly how I do this, is that I will take all these palettes off my inventory of eyeshadow palettes. They will go as decluttered. And then what I do is that I go to my, this is my inventory for things that I am adding on in the month of December. So I'll go to makeup and then I will add all of these as single shadows. And then, so what I've done um, is that I've got like, so ABH Dawn, which is originally from the Subculture palette. It's a 0.7 gram eyeshadow. 
and it's worth three dollars because I've basically worked out so I've looked at from my declutter um, so there's subculture there 14 shadows were in the original palette um, so 14 was the shadow count 42 was the original value of that palette with my within my inventory so then what I've done is 42 as the original price divided it by 14 because that's the number of shadows which gives us a value of 3 that is the way that I work this out that to me seems really obvious but I get questions on how I do my inventory so this is my December declutters I've just started putting things in so that's lip gloss one from two days ago so these are the palettes here that I have taken single shadows out of and then the single shadows will be added in so it will make it look like I have added so it will look like I've added eight shadows worth 35 84 into my inventory in December but the declutter of the full size shadow palettes will more than offset that so that's that's how I work it if I save a shadow out of a palette that I'm decluttering in terms of my inventory so I have just done the calculations on the decluttering of the palettes so there are 24 large eyeshadow palettes leaving my collection today you are looking at them and for all they don't look like very much they are worth $1,038.64 being decluttered off of my inventory so this was my total I had to add on the Gucci palette take off my declutters and that's taken my large eyeshadow palettes down to being worth $1,686.73 so definitely still too much and definitely still too many eyeshadows but a big improvement and then quantity wise I had 63 we added on one we've taken off 24 and that has left us with a nice round 40 so that's the large eyeshadow palettes for my smaller eyeshadows, we are getting rid of six. There was none to add on. Those six were worth $247.71, which takes my small eyeshadows from being worth $920.61 to being worth $672.90. So quite a nice financial bring down. And then quantity wise, I had 19, got rid of six. So that's left me with 13 just to say so this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve here and um, my charlotte tilbury one isn't here and there are a couple of my palettes that i've realized aren't here too so my nabla one my ColourPop midnight masquerade my pap graths um, and it's just because things are in boxes but i definitely want to keep all of the ones that aren't here anyway so yeah just in case you like see them in future and you're like they weren't in this video it's just because of the way things are at the moment but this is like the majority of it and lastly for this video we saved eight single shadows so eight new single shadows get added to my inventory and these four are being decluttered so the quantity there is going up it started at 61 we're adding eight taking away four and that's leaving us with 65 single shadows in my inventory and then for values the actual values have gone down although the quantity has gone up so it's 103.125 if I take the mouse off you can see that better then adding on 35.84 taking away 37.40 and that's leaving a new value of 102.969 so not a huge reduction in value but a tiny bit of a reduction in value so the name of the game now is can I get all of these things into this basket as per the plan so let's see. Okay, so I've got all the big palettes in here which is excellent these like in this box that's not going to fit in there but like definitely if I took them out they could fit in here but I think this could maybe go on the shelf in the wardrobe it's just that I know all of these are not going to fit in the shelf in the wardrobe one of the things I've definitely learned this year is that if things are not accessible to me I don't use them so I know that this storage is still not ideal I know that I still would cycle through things 
unless I'm making a conscious effort to do like short my stash and stuff which I intend to try and do a bit more in 2021. My plan is to sort of try and pick out like a palette a week and keep it on that shelf in my wardrobe for that week and rotate it that way rather than just having these all languish in this crate for another year. I'm really pleased. I've got all of them in for now. That is a huge, huge improvement. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. I'm sure it's been really long. But yeah, I very much appreciate you sticking through if you have done to the end. And I will see you tomorrow for the last day of Vlogmas, which is mad. I can't believe this is the 23rd day and tomorrow's Christmas Eve. But yeah, see you for that. Bye.